All right, we're going to start today with looking at 8.8a, uh, which uh, reads that Earth in space, the student knows characteristics of the universe. The student is expected to describe components of the universe, including stars, nebula, and galaxies, and use models such as the HR diagram for classification. All right, so that's what we're going to focus on, 8.8a. Okay, and we're going to start with, let's go ahead and start with the organization of the universe. Remember that uh, the universe is said to have started with the Big Bang. That is the theory of how the universe originated. Make sure y'all can see all this. All right, and um, remember the biggest thing out there is the universe, okay? So whatever, we don't know if it started with the Big Bang or not. That is a theory, and we'll go with it for now. Um, and then the largest thing out there is the universe. Within the universe, you would find billions of galaxies. Within galaxies, you would find billions of stars. Accompanying stars, you may find planets. And accompanying planets, you may find moons. And then there's leftover debris out there as well, such as meteoroids. So leftover debris. All right, and that would go, that's going from biggest to the very smallest thing that is in our universe. Now, what we are required to know is that a galaxy, start with a galaxy, is billions of stars. some dust, some debris left over from the formation of uh, the galaxy, all bound by gravity. Okay? You can even elaborate say, saying that the galaxies are kind of like a disc shape they're disc shaped meaning that not meaning that they're not elliptical or they don't have various uh, types of galaxies meaning that if you looked at it from out of space it would kind of look like one of them frisbees in, in space okay so it's three-dimensional yes but it's kind of flat and zooming out there remember there are three different types of galaxies there are elliptical, which range from circular looking to like an oval looking. Uh, there are irregular shapes, and anything that doesn't have a regular shape would be considered irregular in shape, right? Whatever it may look like. And then there are spiral, and this is what we have spiral and ours is called the Milky Way galaxy. So if we could refine that statement, a uh, galaxy is a billions of stars, dust, debris, maybe even planets and moons all bound by gravity. They are disc shaped. Now if we're looking at our Milky Way galaxy, say it looks something like this. Our sun is out towards the edge of one of the branches. So this would be the whole solar system. Would be out there towards the end of one of the branches. And I think that, that pretty much covers organization of the universe. 
And I'll also say that if we're talking about our star, the sun, so it looks big because it's closer. So it looks big due to proximity. Um, it's really just a medium sized star. Say medium sized average star. It's really nothing special. It is to us because without this star, life could not exist on Earth. So it provides energy. such as heat and light, right? So with heat, it affects weather. Ocean currents and air currents, right? Convection in the air as well. And the light provides the ability of the plants to do photosynthesis. And without plants, there would be no animals. Remember, there's that interrelationship between plants and animals. So these are very important things. So sun provides the energy on Earth for living things in more ways than one. Let's see. All right, let's look at some other objects that are contained in the universe. Let's uh, look at what, what we call nebula. Nebula is actually just a bunch of gases and debris from a supernova explosion, so from the death of a large star. Okay, but what's cool about the nebula is it gives rise to new stars. So it's the birthplace of new stars. So we also call it, not just birthplace, we call it a stellar for star, stellar nursery. All right, so, that, so much for nebula. Let's see what else are they asking us to, okay, we've kind of defined galaxies, stars. Let's define them a little bit. We know our sun, but what makes a star? Well, stars are truly... Um, balls of gases of, that uh, do hydrogen fusion. So they're balls of gases. They do hydrogen fusion. Meaning they take hydrogen, a hydrogen atom, and another hydrogen atom and through a chemical process, they combine them and they form a new element, helium. Okay? So that's what stars do. Stars, we're going to look at the HR diagram here in a minute, but you can read or classify stars according to that. Like we said, our sun is a medium-sized star, and we'll look at that on the... HR diagram as well. I think this covers organization of the universe and objects within.